Hi again. I have another friend to introduce. So you can see, I, I get to travel a lot. The interesting thing is this is my first trip to Asia. I uh, spend a lot of time in Africa, um, and I've also spent some time from this gentleman's country, which actually got missed when we did the shout out. Um, he is not from Africa. He is not from Latin America or South America. He's from the Caribbean, if you were calling out a region. Um, Daniel Jean-Louis is from Haiti. And, and so just so we know, yeah, uh, sure. All the way from Haiti. Thank you. I, I know he didn't want to be lonely. Was, it, was there anybody else from the Caribbean? Oh, oh, we got a hand? Amen. All right, you're not alone, Daniel. So um, Daniel Jean-Louis is many things. He is a business owner of a new guest house. How many years have you had your guest house? About two years now. Okay, two years. Um, you're also a lecturer on business and entrepreneurship, often using a manual that integrates the Lausanne Conference BAM materials um, <clears throat> into business training. You facilitate a lot of training in Haiti. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're also the point person for Partners Worldwide for Haiti. And let's see, what am I missing? You are a new dad. I am. Okay. <laughs> uh, how, how old is your little one? I do get some sleep. <laughs> I think she's four months. That's, that's I love very it. Long. So he, he's, he's missing family right now, but glad to be here, I, th I think. Are you, are you happy? I'm absolutely glad to be here. It's having some fun. Yes. Um, but today we're going to talk about Haiti. And Haiti got on the radar with the globe when the earthquake happened. It was January 2010. And, but you've been living in Haiti before the quake, now after the quake, experiencing and even doing some research because, oh, I, also, I forgot, he's also writing a book and in the middle of researching a book. This is a busy man. Um, he'll talk a little more about that later, but in all of this research and experience that you've had, give the folks here a little more of a picture of the before, the Haiti before and after the quake. Uh, thank you, Matt and Joe for inviting and to Roxanne for this great introduction, and I'm absolutely glad to be here. Um, today, Haiti has been uh, on the news for a number of reasons. Before the earthquake, uh, and when I used to go to school in the US, every time the TV comes on and it talks about Haiti, and I would leave the room, because I think they're going to say something bad. Uh, it's either an NGO showing a new ad to ask for compassionate fund, or the next uh, natural disaster that kills people. So there's a number of challenges uh, that came up before the earthquake. The unemployment was really high, and still after the earth earthquake, unemployment still remained over 80% of the population. So the, the, that, that, that says uh, uh, the, the problem of purchasing power of the population not being able to afford what they need is a result of lack of job. And again, as to say, over 80% of the Haitian population today still live on less than $2 a day. That means that they have very little money to uh, uh, sustain themselves, to provide for their kids, transportation, uh, uh, lodging, and so on. So it, it is in this context that we, uh, our partners worldwide and myself as a Haitian, we have been uh, 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 implementing some program that we're going to have the chance to talk to you guys today. But people responded, right? I mean, he, the U.S. is so close. I mean, this is a hop, a little flight from Miami. And, you know, people care. We, we heard about, you know, we hear about the poverty. We saw the earthquake. And, I, I'm, I mean, how many NGOs are, are there right now in Haiti? The response was overwhelming. Let's just say the world is very generous towards Haiti. Um, after the earthquake, there's, uh, uh, those NGOs, for those of you guys who don't know what an NGO is, it's non-governmental organization. It's, non -for, it's not for profit, it's non-governmental. It's an institution that exists to uh, uh, work towards solving humanitarian problems. Charitable, charitable. Charitable right. purposes. Um, there were some before the earthquake, but after the earthquake, the world was so generous, so many NGOs were created, and so many of them were moving down there, 
we have today about 12,000 <laughs> registered, that, those are the ones we know, registered NGOs functioning in the country, and, and this is what we are today. And uh, uh, the, this generosity has gone so far that the bilateral organizations like the, the United States or the European Union or even the African nations, they have pledged about $12 billion to rebuild Haiti. And out of that $12 billion, there was uh, $6 billion donated and $6 billion never donated. And the Christian organizations like Compassion, World Vision, the Red Cross alone raised about over $150 million. Um, all those organizations alone, they also raised over $6 billion. So total of post-earthquake, there was over $6 billion, $12 billion donated towards Haiti. And this massive purchasing power was so big, so great, it is 566 times more than the purchasing power of the Haitian government. That is to say that how much money was being donated by foreign government individuals given $20 a piece to help Haiti. So Daniel, everybody should be rich in Haiti, uh, but you know the poverty is persisting, and I know you've been looking at this, you know, you've been seeing the experience of the entrepreneurs. You've been doing some research. Why isn't all this love and compassion, why isn't it working? You know, Rox, this is a class, this is why we are here today. Anybody who's here today is convinced and believe that throwing money at, some, at somebody or at something does not solve the problem. Anybody who's here today, I believe that. Um, out of all that money, Every single Haitian should be rich, with a car and a house, and driving on a highway. It's a small country, by the way, smaller than Maryland, the states of Maryland and the US. But the, the reality is, even all this money, there was 80% of Haitians still not working, okay? 82% of Haitians still left, live on less than $2 a day. And as I've been looking into this, I've been researching in my, in my, in my class, starting to, to do questionnaires, and um, um, Partners Without Member gave me the book Dead Aid and When Helping Hurt. And I started to reflect on, um, from my Christian worldview, of, of why is it the case? What is the source of poverty? And then collecting data, information, interview, came to the realization that for generations past, the Haitian leadership has consistently missed the opportunity to bring Haiti to a competitive level to establish an environment for business to grow. Consistently for generations and decades ago. And the second reason that is more of a, a focus for us today was the invasion of, I don't want to say invasion, it, uh, the, all the NGOs came with good intention, but the common... I will say, how, how about the consequences? The, cons the consequences, there we go. The arrival of so many NGOs with so much money at all, one, at all ones, and what we call in the book that I'm writing, it's, it's called Harmless Aid, by the way, uh, they come with so much money, what they do is they replace or they build a parallel structure that is contradictory to the system that exists in Haiti today. So before you get to do academic on us, Daniel, yeah, he's a teacher, he's a prof, so um, give, give us some examples of what you're talking about. What I'm talking about today is, the, the, we call this a misalignment. A misalignment is practically a distortion of market. Anybody here live in a market economy? What I'm talking about here today, Roxanne, I'm talking about, for instance, a church in Wisconsin, the United States. Haiti and the United States, we go way back, okay? We have a loving relationship. Not. <laughs> Sometimes. 
the, the, a church in Wisconsin, having great compassion for the Haitian people, do a food drive. Everybody want to give the food drive. We love the little Haitian girls with their uniforms. We want to feed them. There's nothing wrong with that. That's why aid is harmless. The wrong comes when they raise 20,000 jars of peanut butter, they ship it down there, and they give it away for free. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. The wrong comes when it puts two or three peanut butter businesses in Haiti. Out, in Haiti out of business. And peanut growers. Peanut growers out of business, peanut distributors out of business, peanut transporters out of business, sale of peanut butters out of business, the 10% tax of the Haitian government to provide roads and so on out of business too. And uh, it wasn't just peanut butter, right? I, I, I think I've heard of, uh, you know, he works with a network of entrepreneurs. Backpack manufacturers got impacted. Um, water bottlers. We're talking about a massive invasion. Yeah. Uh, in all industry you look at, housing. The, after the earthquake again, feed my starving children. They collect 48 million meals to donate to Haitians. We want a comparison to the book, to the research we're doing. If all this money was purchasing meals in Haiti, okay, uh, by the way, $12 billion, only 1% of the money spent in Haiti. Um, if 48 million meals was purchased there, and by the way, again, Haiti is used to export rice. Now Haiti is importing 80% of its own rice. We are the third largest importer of rice from the United States. A country of 10 millions with a country of 300 millions. So if Feed My Starving Children were purchasing, purchased the 48 millions of meals from Haiti, we calculated an average of $1 per meal, okay? The Haitian government just on tax could have paid its police force for three months. And not even counting the amount of uh, 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 opportunity cost for the rice growers and the transporters. and Lots the, of jobs. Like, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of jobs in terms of opportunity cost that could have been created if those NGOs realign the aid with the economic system that exists already. All right, so now you've got the practical, what you mean by market distortion. That, that's what I mean by market distortion. And practically, in a sense, what they do is they replace transactions, which is what Haitians, everyone else today in the world except Cuba and North Korea do to live, they replace transactions by donations. And that's what kills the, the, the countries. That's what harms the countries, not the aid itself. It's just the how the aid going going through those countries. All right, well, before we, don't worry, we're gonna get to some bright spots here. I don't leave you guys you know, hanging on it. We're gonna have some answers, but there's one more, I think, a uh, little more mission-focused issue I think you had about NGOs coming in who are doing business, but maybe not doing business in a way that was honoring um, some of the Haitian businesses. So, so uh, share your story on that. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a pretty personal story. It's almost funny, okay? You know those stories that are almost funny? <laughs> when I moved back to Haiti with an MBA, I thought, man, I'm going to collaborate with a, a church and work. I started the soccer f uh, ministry organizations. And, and, and OK, things are going well until I started the business. And I found out that my biggest competitors are the mission organizations. <laughs> uh, what they do. <laughs> Still doing today. So I started a guest house business, which is a guest lodge for folks who come down. But every single mission organization also has a guest lodge. But the difference between my guest lodge and those guest lodges is the fact my guest lodge is legally registered with the Haitian government. He's paying 10% tax to the uh, uh, 
to the government because I need security. I need, like Dennis was profoundly saying, government needs taxes. This is how they build security, roads, infrastructure for the economy to thrive and for, to build the next generation. And so my business, I make sure I, sp I spend $6,000, by the way, to just register it. Uh, how, long, how long did it take and you to a register? Year. And a year. I mean, this is the average in Haiti. It's the average in Haiti. So that makes my price 10% more expensive already than those other Nazarene guest house, Methodist guest house, Haiti Partners guest house, and I don't know. <laughs> so that's, all, my price is already 10% more expensive. Then they fundraise to start those guest houses, and when they have an operational problem, they fundraise again back to the church, who feel like they're doing a good job, which makes my price even between 20 and 30% more expensive than the mission guest houses. But it's a really nice lodge. Trinity Lodge, stay there. Well, I, I, as a Haitian man, as a Christian man, as, as a strong capitalist, I believe God made, made us perfect. And I believe that we should do everything in our power to do everything perfect. My business today has been rated number one on TripAdvisor for the entire its entire existence over all of the other guest houses. And I take pride in it. Daniel, that, I want you to hear that story because I think it challenges us also as Christians in business. When we're doing business as mission, your national counterparts are looking at you and he knows who's paying tax and, and who isn't. And, and you know, so do others. And so how do we represent our faith and our business? It's gotta be all the way through. All right, on to the bright spots because there are some things working in Haiti. This is a visionary who cast a vision. Share that vision, share some of the bright spots that you're seeing um, as relation to unemployment and poverty and job creation in Haiti. Well, the, um, what I did is I looked at Haiti from the bright spot. I've traveled in a number of countries and I've read the news and I read a lot about countries. I've seen a lot of country in the uh, um, course of 10 years has gone from doing great to doing poor. Every coast, for instance. Politicians are destroying it, okay? Uh, different countries that are doing good, all of a sudden, in the course of a, uh, of a decade, going poorly. So I believe Haiti can go forward too. I strongly believe that. If, if God is, uh, has created us, he can also give us a way out of this. And, and when I looked at all, all those other emerging nations, for instance, uh, China, which is a huge economy today, I see what they did is they put job creation at the very most fundamental indicator of their economic development. And once they do that, they go backward to think, what can create jobs for our young people? What can increase their purchasing power to the level that will solve their problems and the problems of the country altogether? And then Going back, backwards again, we realize, well, it's a market economy, it needs to be business. So that's why after the earthquake, uh, 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 we come up with a vision of, why don't we work with these NGOs? We're not gonna bash them. You know, my competitors are not, I'm not gonna kill them. Kill them. <laughs> I'm a Christian man, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but I can work with them. All those churches in North America, the Wisconsin church that raised 20,000 bars of peanut butter, we can work with them. I think that the worst thing is to do the wrong thing. The next worst thing is not to do anything. And the right thing, the best thing is to do the right thing. So, so tell uh, us that, what was that vision you cast though? What was that? The vision is to create 100,000 jobs in Haiti by 2020. It's not a big project that we do it's 
as we work with groups of business people, we help them with four main aspects. Business, Haitian business people that, that commit to, to this goal. To training, okay? A lot of them don't have access to training, by the way. Um, to mentoring, we bring those churches in the U.S. that are bringing uh, 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 free good things. Now we go to them and say, you have business people in your church. Would you like them to go and, and mentor a Haitian business? And third of all, we do the access to capital. Access to capital, uh, um, um, we go through a local bank. We don't go and create a, a uh, unfair um, um, bank on our own subsidized to compete with the local bank. We go through the existing banks and, and look for a partnership. And, and this partnership will, will provide affordable uh, uh, rate of money to the Haitians. And the, thir the fourth thing we do is we call it advocacy. And uh, through the advocacy, one of the advocacy examples is a conference. We've put up together three conferences since the earthquake. We call all of these NGOs with all those monies. We call all the business people with products sitting on their shelves and nobody talked to them. Just one example, folks, so you can understand. A lot of call for tenders were put in English, in a newspaper. They speak French and Creole in Haiti. In English. So, and, and, and <laughs> almost funny, right? <laughs> it's not funny. So, <laughs> No, seriously, you have to contain yourself really strongly not to lash out sometimes. What are you doing? So, and we call those businesses and these NGOs so they can talk to each other. The business people in Haiti, they bring symbols of their, of their products. By the way, they do make bottles of water in Haiti. <laughs> you don't need to buy it from Nestle. <laughs> Ship, ship it, it there. in a container that costs cost. twelve thousand dollars to ship. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> and so they interact with each other. So we started to see this interaction is producing fruits. We run a survey for the three conferences. Turned out that seventy percent of the uh, conference participants raise their sale by ten percent. So we become a voice of connection. And just example of one business, uh, uh, after attending one conference, he doubled his sale and also doubled his workforce. We're talking about 38 Haitians who didn't have a job, now have a job. Another company that we work with through connections, they employed 60 people before the earthquake. And right now, after the earthquake, they got a search, employed 260 people. And now, through innovation, they got post-earthquake bubble. Now they're stabilized at 150. We're talking about hundreds of people who didn't have work, who didn't have dignity. All of that happened because God has led a vision, a ways of partners all right, not to compete with the local system, but to recognize it, respect it, work with it, and build on what God has laid before us, and that has bear so many fruit. It's, it's unbelievable. So Daniel, I, and I want to clarify, you know, Partners for Royal was a bit an impetus, because this is the guy that got the vision, but it's an alliance. It's an alliance of NGOs and for-profits and um, people stepping up. How many organizations are involved in this 100,000 Jobs Alliance? Today we have about um, um, over a dozen of key NGOs that have signed up. When they sign up, what they do, they commit to buy in Haiti, first of all. We run a campaign called Buy Haitian, Restore Haiti. Hmm. We have a website that is, that is going up as, as a result of that. And, and second of all, they commit to train okay, the business in their localities they work with. We provide the curriculum, we provide the trainers. And also, they provide to, to publish Haiti's best assets, not just its poverty. I've, 
it's, it's, it's unbelievable uh, how much of a bad press Hayes is getting. It, it's, it's outrageous. Sorry. So they Sorry. commit to, to, uh, to not just show, we're not telling them to paint a rosy picture. We just tell them not to lie and make. Right, don't put all starving. And make, put, yeah. the, put the entrepreneurs on the front page. So <laughs> um, I, you, there's only 30 seconds left. I don't want to give you a little opportunity to promote your book. When's it out? Um, repeat the title. The title is Harmless Aid, Opportunity-Based Economic Development and the Case of Haiti. So it's through this interaction that I believe and I've seen, it's been demonstrated that God created us to help each other. Aid is not wrong by itself. It's just when it distorts the economic system, this is when it's wrong. And this book is, um, we can expect it to come by August, and then we're working hard to finish the case studies and the data so we can put it out. Great. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Roxanne. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Roxanne.